Hello everybody, my name is Naya and I'm the Black Female Engineer. I provide content for you and aspiring software engineers and today we're going to talk about how I build my apps in seven days. Yeah, you've heard that right. I can go from this to this in just one week. Whenever I have a new app idea, I can't sit on it for long because then I just demotivate myself and also tell myself all the reasons why it's not a good idea. And I can't have that because I'm trying to build something here. And even if you're not trying to create something for the outside world to see, building apps is a great way to get more experience, build up your portfolio, and ultimately show other people, jobs, etc., that you know what you're doing, that they should hire you. So how can we do so in a way that doesn't take up all of our time? Number one, the very first thing I do when I have a new app idea and decide, you know what, I have seven days to build this out, is decide what my MVP is. MVP stands for Minimally Viable Product, and it's basically what is the least functionality this app needs to have so that it is technically a full app, fully working, and the concept is there. For example, I recently built out a dating app where people would get to rate their dates. I wanted a way to know that the people I'm going on dates with were people who weren't going to be insanely late, going to be respectful, all the works. And so what was my MVP? Well, it's a dating app, so there needed to be some type of matching mechanism. Number two there needs to be some type of messaging mechanism because how are we going to get from swiping to a date? So I needed to create some messaging. And then finally, there needed to be some way for then people to rate their dates once they went on one. So creating a page where people could rank people based on how respectful they were, timely they were, all the works. Then boom, with those three things, I would have my MVP. Because of who I am as a person, I can start getting very distracted with all the other things I want to add into an app. For example, with a dating app, something that would be really cool for me to add is location services, making sure that you feel safe and whatnot and you can tag your location so that everyone, God forbid, you know, nothing goes wrong. Everyone knows where you are. So location services. Every photo and video that you would want included, all of those different things. These are just two examples of how adding features that would make, I believe, for a better dating app just detracted from the goal of the app itself, which was getting to rate people. Number two, I don't do the back end. I don't, I don't do it. I don't do it. I don't it. I'm not a backend developer, so even though I know how to implement things like authentication, allowing people to log in and sign up for your app, and creating databases that are good, robust, and secure, and whatnot, I don't want to. It takes away time from doing things that require actual customization. Logging in and creating a database is the same thing every single time. And so why am I spending time doing something that is pretty standard when I could work on creating something that for me doesn't yet exist, is a whole new innovative idea and is going to be the thing that sets my app apart. So what I do instead is I use Google's Firebase to build out the backend for me. This, after doing some research, is the resource that I found to be the best and easiest to use for me. This is not an ad, and I know it sounds like one, but I really do use Firebase all the time and really, really love it. By using Firebase, I get to create a login and sign up screen along with databases lots of databases in a matter of literally moments. And because it is Google, I don't have to worry about it not being secure, especially if I do end up releasing the app into the public. So making sure that my backend is handled by other people, I get to focus on the parts of the app that actually get me excited. Using the dating app as an example again, I use Google's Firebase to 
allow users to sign up and log in, have the app track their swipes, their right and left swipes, and who are matches for them. I also get to implement messaging within the app, which is really cool because I had never had an app with real time messaging before. So that was really awesome and pretty simple to learn as well. And yeah, being able to have a fully functioning app because the back end is being handled was really phenomenal. So yes, I really recommend it. And if anyone from Google is watching this, can you please sponsor me? Because I love y'all and I promise I'll do right by y'all. <laughs> Number three, a little controversial maybe, but like, listen to me, hear the words I'm saying. Okay, please. I copy like a lot. So, so. Hold up. First, let's understand that the things I'm copying, either one, my app is not going to be uh, brought to the public. And so it's okay that I'm copying because I'm doing it all for my own learning and just proving to myself that I can build this thing. So that's number one, why it's okay. Number two, it'll be okay even if I release it to the public, if I make sure I'm not copying something proprietary. So for example, with that dating app, users swipe to get a match. Well, the swiping feature is something that is proprietary and trademarked to Tinder. So if I actually wanted to release this app, I could not do that. I could not do that at all. Swiping to create a match is trademarked. So I would need to create a whole nother mechanism to allow users to look through their users, say who they like, don't like, and then create a match. But because I'm not releasing this app to the public, it is okay for me to have some swiping and learn through that process. You know, copying also comes in handy for me because I am not good at creating UIs. And it's really funny to say that because I really do like the UIs of the things I have created. Oh my God, what is that? However, it takes a lot of research for me, and I guess for actual UI, UX developers, that this is what they do too. But it takes a lot of research for me to get to a UI that I like because I can't just create it from my own mind. I cannot just think to myself like, oh, this is how I want a login screen to look, or this is how I want the homepage to look. I cannot, I can, my, my mind goes blank. Instead, I need to look for inspiration elsewhere and then attempt to replicate it. When I was building mostly web apps, I would go to wix.com and look through all of their different templates and see which pages I liked and which pages I wanted to recreate onto my own web app. Now that I'm building mobile apps primarily, I think about what genre the app that I'm creating lies in. For example, dating or fitness or social media. So now that I have the genre, let me download all of those different apps in the same genre and look at how they organize their things, how they put different icons and displays and whatnot. So that is how I copy to make sure that I am not spending days on days wondering how I want my app to look like. And there we have it y'all, how I create apps in seven days. This is for web apps, mobile apps, etc. These types are the same for me. And yeah, I hope that's very helpful for y'all. Please let me know what y'all are creating if you know it's not meant for the public because I don't want your ideas to get snatched out here, but let me know what you're creating. I would love to hear what's in your portfolio projects and whatnot and what other videos you'd like to see from me. So now I'll talk to you later. Bye.